Hey, Emily here. I did my book report on the book Your Inner Fish by Neil Shubin. And it's a book that explains the path um, that took, that happened, sorry, that happened um, from for fish to turn into humans. Or something sort of like that. Before I go into too much detail about what goes on in my book, um, I'd like to show you something that I put together with the help of my cousins to help you get a glimpse of what goes on. So, enjoy. Don't you know we have limited time to decide? We keep on arguing over this one thing. <laughs> At last, after working so long, we figured it out. I dubbed this chicken Jean Sonic Hedgehog. Tiktelic is the answer between land and fish. The tide washing all the fossils away. They're so important. So why are they so under-acknowledged? Look at the facts. 3% of our genome is dedicated to smell anyway. <laughs> Remember the law of everything. So, whether or not you appreciate that, that's completely up to you. But, um, that video, or as I should say, movie trailer, premieres some of the highlights of my book, I should say. And so, going into more detail about that, um, as I said, I'm doing Your Inner Fish by Neil Shubin. And uh, Neil Shubin is um, a professor. Uh, who works at U Chicago? He got he earned his PhD at Harvard, and he also studied at Columbia University as well as Berkeley in California. Sorry, and um, so he wrote this book, and it explains. Um, it covers actually lots of things, and in addition to transitional forms, as we learn in our uh, evolution unit, he also talks about some embryos, which is. Um, like, it branches a little bit into embryology. And, um, so, uh, Titoic, it's, which is his find, his fossil that he's most renowned for, uh, finding, is, um, this organism that he found, discovered, and they estimate it's about 375 million years old. And it's, a transitional form between fish and land organism and it has wrists its wrists can move so um, because its wrists can move they suspect it is even capable of doing push-ups and um, so looking here serendipity is what fuels lots of his discoveries a lot of his journey wouldn't have been um, possible if he wasn't able to just be there at the right time. And um, this is an example, an example of this would be when he um, was searching for fossils and he was pretty poor. He didn't have very many resources. And he is, and his um, colleague Ted were um, arguing over this. And then they just so happened to pick up a geology textbook and it showed them exactly where they would discover lots of fossils. He also discovered lots, he also is credited for discovering lots of other fossils that continue to fuel his work, and this is how he just lives by. Um, scientists, as in the in the short film that I showed you, um, there is my, there were my three lovely scientists, and they were experimenting on a chicken, and um, the story behind this is that um, there was actually scientists who were um, studying genes of chicken embryos and they wanted to see um, a certain gene um, and like how it would affect, if tampered with, how it would affect the development of the embryo. 
and they, after researching and seeing what it did, because the gene they discovered, um, in even in like different organisms, the gene allowed for the development of limbs in um, all organisms to develop the way that they're supposed to. Um, they named it Sonic Hedgehog Gene after the Sega character, because because the gene was called Hedgehog Gene, and so in the chicken form they decided to call it Sonic Hedgehog Gene. Um, so, what I also found interesting was when he, um, he mentioned our DNA extraction lab, which I found was very interesting. It was basically the exact same thing other than he used um, different parts of the fruits. And also he did not mention wheat germ, which was disappointing, but strawberries and bananas were given. And also he mentioned the Human Genome Project, which, what, which is what we uh, went over in class, and, the map, and it involves the mapping of the human genome. Um, so, a final thing that I found interesting was that, well, to put it this way, Neil Shubin is a very good author, I would say so myself, because he has a very simple writing style, even though he does use, like, large words here and there, but that's just terminology. He has a very good writing style where he'll say something and he'll explain it, even if so someone who may have not learned it before, such as the development of sedimentary rocks, could understand based on his explanation, and they're very clear. And so, and he also is very amusing with his works and constantly throws in really funny things. And um, I think a great example of this is of his great writing style is when he put it into his perspective where we can understand the history of the Earth by scaling the entire history of the world, 6.5 billion years, into and condensing it into one year. And so, if the Earth was created on January 1st and December 31st is, mo is considered modern day, then uh, first organisms start showing up around June, first, like, first bodied organisms start showing up in late fall, and we as humans ourselves would show up perhaps December 31st, which I thought was very cool. And um, he's a good author, I would recommend this book to people who would be interested in reading it. It's hard to get through if you're not interested in the topic, as are most science books I would say. So if you're interested in reading this book, go ahead and check it out. And that's all I have to say. You can lift your head up to the sky, take a deeper breath and give it some.